four minute mark is underway for our vintage. I'd like to thank our class sponsor again, the Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum. On board again here with us this year at Spanaway Lake for the Summer Nationals. The Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is the nation's only public museum dedicated solely to powerboat racing. Formed in 1983, their mission is to honor, preserve, and celebrate the history of powerboat racing. The museum features an incredible collection of vintage hydroplanes spanning seven decades, including boats that have won 17 gold cups. The Hydroplane and Race Boat Museum is located at 5917 South 196th Street in Kent, Washington. Jim Olson is back with us. And what category are we seeing now? Is this what you would consider your medium class? This is the mid-sized boats, uh, and these are all later model boats. We have some some boats in the region that are older that would uh, fit into this group, but these are for the most part the boats out of the 70s. Uh, you've got three different styles of boats out there. You've got two Jones, uh, two Jones holes, and a Suey. I should say three. Uh, and you also have a Carlson out there. We should have had uh, one more, and that being Jerry Kelson in a Kelson hole, but uh, I see Jerry's not quite ready. That's what happens when you spend your time working on everybody else's boats. That's what I love about when I, the vintage is listening to your analyst, Jim, is uh, hearing the old boat builder names, the, uh, the Ron Jones, the Ted Jones, the Lauterbachs, uh, Don Kelsons. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on and on, and then you have a few that just build a few boats over their careers, it was dynamite boats as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of boat builders and I, you know, fortunate enough to grow up here in the 50s and work with guys like the late Bob Gillum and Bob Miller and uh, worked for Eddie Carrollson a number of times, but uh, no, we've got some great builders here who have been in instrumental in this sport. Uh, mm -hmm. When you look at Ron Jones and what Ron did over the years, the number of boats they produced, uh, the innovations and things, it's, it's amazing. And then add in Ed Carlson with the uh, shoes that you see on most of the newer boats, the rare shoes. Uh, then you've got Don Kelson who built a lot of world record holders and winners, you know, national champions. Uh, we got some great people here and, and they're still involved and that's the neat thing. I met Don Kelson a couple of years ago here at the um yeah, Pacino Memorial Regattas. This year we're running for the Summer Nationals, of course. Today and tomorrow will be the yeah, Pacino Memorial Regatta. I don't think uh, Don built a true unlimited. I think he might have helped assist him build some, but I don't think actually one had his name tagged to it. No, he didn't have any with his name tagged to it, but he did do the Hallmark back. It was the, I want to say the 30-day or 31-day wonder uh, after they destroyed a boat. They got a set of plans from Ed Carrollson. Uh, Ed was not the fastest guy in town at building boats, as I can tell you from working from him, he, he had his own schedule, but uh, Don and, and the crew put a boat together and uh, never worked quite the way they wanted. It wasn't a bad boat, just didn't quite work. Uh, and going back, uh, that boat replaced the Hallmark Cones, which was lost when it disintegrated yep. at the 1971 APBA Gold Cup in Madison, and I was there, and that was the day I got hooked. And, you know, when you take a picture in your mind, I'll never forget, all you could see was debris flying up in the air, and I think a guy named uh, Muncie kind of came over on Lake Borges in there and turned one on lap one. Bill never did anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that knew Bill knew that he would. Uh, yeah, that, uh, well, you're, and you're, you're not unlike myself, having having watched that, that stuff and, and those years, uh, a lot of fun. Here we go. Uh, we got David Leach leading him into the first turn. Uh, in the Buccaneer, that's a Ron Jones boat. Then you have Kelly Hodgkin inside of him in another Ron Jones. Then you have the uh, Calypso 2, and that's uh, Frank Schneider. Uh, it's really fun to watch Frank out here again, and, and he and Jeff are having a ball with this stuff. And then on the inside, you've got uh, Steve Kramer in the uh, water scamp, which is a Suey Hall. And that was uh, that belonged to a neighbor of mine when I was a kid. So. I got indoctrinated early, and as uh, Earl Wham said, 
I think last year at Fred Leland's memorial. It's a disease. Once you've got it, you don't get rid of it. Uh, you can try, but it's never going to go away. Got a friend in uh, Evansville, Indiana, Ed Cooper Jr. He knows what that disease is like, and uh, I've got it. You get a lot of that here in the, the sport of hydroplane racing, not only in the inboard and the unlimited. Jim, the first time out, we saw a couple of boats that took a set of plans and built boats for the vintage requirements. Are all four of these boats out here, did they actually race in racing day? Those are all original boats. Uh, each and every one of them, they've been restored over the years, and uh, uh, John Leach actually put, put the Buccaneer back together. He wasn't really even interested, from what I hear, to do it, but he put it back together and came out for a while, and then his health took a little turn for the worse, I guess you'd say, uh, and David stepped up and started driving the boat, and David has just been instrumental in helping to teach some of these guys that don't have race experience how to start and... Uh, keep your lane and things like that. Uh, and as you'll see, he'll lead them around every time if you give them half a chance. you just got to let them go. This group here looks uh, well behaved, doing an outstanding job. They'll come down to complete their second lap. The vintages will go four times around, span away lake. And you mentioned that Buccaneer on the outside. Uh, love that cab over design boat. And that was kind of a craft well ahead of its days, actually, when it was built. Well, and the funny story about that is uh, you see David waving at everybody right now. He's got, he's coming off. He must have an issue. Uh, that boat, when I was over at Soap Lake earlier this year, I got this chance to sit down with John, and I asked him. I said, "Was this thing fast out of the out of the box?" And he goes, "This thing was a dog." <laughs> and they uh, they worked on it, and finally Ron came up with an idea. They put a shim under the strut moved its position slightly, and he said it was like the boat came alive. And that's how it got to be where it was. It's a, boats from yesteryear, and even today, with the inboard unlimited, just that small change you wouldn't think would make the difference, but it can. Well, that's like when I worked for Ed back in the 70s. Uh, we built the same boat uh, in a cab-over style for 280 and, and uh, 225 hydro. Well, the only difference was we shimmed the strut deeper for the two and a quarter so it didn't have as much lift in it. And it doesn't take a lot. As far as the uh, engine capacity going out here with this medium group, what are we looking at uh, cubic inch wise? Well, the Buccaneer has a 273 in it, uh, water scamp, and uh, boy, the brain just went dead. Uh, Annabelle are running 305s and uh, uh, Jeff Snyder's got a Plymouth in his as well. So we're running in the 273 to 300 cubic inch range okay. with two barrels, pump gas, and not highly modified. And you mentioned that 305. We'll see them later today in that five liter class. And uh, I love boat racing, Jim, but when it comes five liter racing, I get my fist clenched and uh, love to see them roar out there. Well, and, and I wish we had more of them. Uh, we've taken a little bit of a hit this year and in the region, and I, I guess around the country we don't have that many running, but uh, when, when we used to run these boats back in the day, you could expect 25 280 hydros to show up at an event, yeah. and lots of eliminations, uh, 12 boats in a heat, mm -hmm. I mean, it was a zoo, and lots of fun. Now here, even though it is vintage, and you can tell a couple, all three of these guys are running at pretty nice tilt. What kind of straightaway speeds we see in here from these three vintage boats? Well, I heard something about 105 uh, from somebody. I won't mention any names because we're not we're not out there racing. Uh, but I heard 105, 110 for some shoot speeds for some of these boats in this size. And you're going to see faster than that in the next in the third third go round for vintage uh, when the seven liters come out there. We've got one boat that is probably maximum of about 90, but we've got two others that run well over 100 and uh, very loud. We put on a whale of a show. As you see them coming down, we got hands up, coming in for the end of this, back to the pits. Uh, and that's one of the things you, if you watch these guys, they're all supposed to have, and gals, excuse me. Yeah. Jill will be down here to talk to me in a minute. Uh, but we get our hands up. We're looking around to make sure where everybody is, we don't need to have an accident. Yeah. And these three guys that are coming in right now are three of the best out here at what we got. And I miss that, and it's for a good reason with the capsules now. We don't see that a lot in the hydroplane class nowadays, but years ago, uh, 
that was one of the safety requirements as far as driver etiquette and critique is uh, had to have them hand signals outside that cockpit. Well, you want everybody to know where you're going, and that's why we have radios now, uh, because you can't see. Uh, but it does take a little bit out of the, of the sport. It's not quite the same without being able to see the driver there hanging on for dear life at times. It's, uh, it's very enjoyable. Especially in the old days on some of those uh, unlimited races when the wind would whip up and the water conditions were a little bit suspect. They'd send them out in the warm-up period. You'd either come by and give them the thumbs up or the thumbs down, and uh, you don't see that today. Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. In fact, if the wind comes up much at all, they're off the water. Uh, they're, the boats are designed.